Welcome to this tutorial video from tutormeonline.co. Today, this is a microeconomics tutorial video. And in this video, we will be dealing with the production possibilities frontier, better known as a PPF. We'll be looking at efficient and inefficient points with regards to the PPF, and we'll also be looking at shifting of the PPF itself. And we'll deal with these topics by means of a question. Suppose only two products, plastic cups, PC, and metal shells, which we'll call MS, are produced. We'll draw the production possibility frontier to show increasing opportunity costs for both PC and MS. We will indicate efficient point E and inefficient point I. And we'll also illustrate the effect of a discovery of a new source of iron ore, which is used in the production of the metal shelves. So the first question is to draw the production possibility frontier, PPF, which shows increasing opportunity costs for both PC and MS. So the typical PPF graph you find in almost all of your textbooks will look like this. Now, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what does a PPF actually illustrate? And a PPF simply shows us that if we use all of our resources efficiently to its maximum use, we can reach several different combinations of the two goods. In this case, our plastic cups, which I'll put on the vertical axis, and our metal shelves, which we can put here on the horizontal axis. So if we use the resources efficiently, we can achieve different combinations. Now each point on the PPF itself indicates to us a different combination of the two goods. But also any point with inside the PPF, so this part here, also shows us different combinations, although it is not efficient or we do not use it to the maximum use. So how do we indicate the increasing opportunity cost part? So opportunity cost is the cost of obtaining one more unit. So if we want one more unit of our plastic cups, how many metal shelves do we need to give up? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate this by just using some arbitrary figures here. So we'll say eight plastic cups. If we produce eight plastic cups, we achieve a certain amount of metal shelves, which I'm going to make four. And then our next combination on the PPF itself is this point there and we shall make this seven and if we make seven plastic cups we produce six metal shells and then I'm going to do it for this point as well a similar process so for the plastic cups we're going to say six and if we produce six plastic cups we can produce seven metal shells and then I'll use a last point here. And we'll say if we produce three plastic cups, then we are going to produce eight metal shells. So this is our different combinations which the PPF shows us. So if we want to go from six to seven plastic cups on the vertical axis, how many metal shells do we have to give up? So if we go from six we can have seven metal shelves to seven plastic cups, which is six metal shelves. We see that we need to give up one metal shelf at this point to obtain one extra plastic cup. But if we want to go from seven to eight plastic cups, so we want another unit of plastic cups, how many metal shelves do we have to give up? Well, in this case, we need to go from six metal shelves to four so that we can move from seven to eight. So we can see for the next one unit of plast uh, plastic cups, we need to give up two metal shelves. So, and that is our increasing cost. For the first extra unit, we only had to give up one unit of metal shelves, but if we want another unit from seven to eight, we need to give up two. So that indicates to us our increasing opportunity cost, the cost of obtaining one more unit of a certain good. So the quest second question is to indicate efficient point E and an inefficient point I. Now I've already alluded to the fact that the PPF graph itself, this blue line, indicates to us all the various combinations if we use our resources efficiently. So we can already show that each point on the PPF itself we can mark as E. This is all of these points, so you can mark any one of them. But inside the graph, in this part here, we can obtain these combinations of goods. So these are all various combinations of good, but they are all inefficient points. So we can mark all of them as an I because what it shows us we can obtain these combinations of goods, 
although we are not fully using or maximizing our resources. So the question which we should ask ourselves is what about the point on the outside of the PPF, on this side? These are points we cannot achieve at the moment. Even if we, because if we maximize our resources, we obtain the blue line. So anything to the right or above the PPF itself is unachievable. We cannot reach this. So the first question is to illustrate the effect of a discovery of a new source of iron ore. And they make clear in this question that iron ore is used in the production of metal shelves only. So let's put in some arbitrary points in again. So let's say at the moment, before the discovery of the resource, we can make 15 metal shelves and 20 plastic cups. So if we use all of our resources just for the metal shelves, we will be at this point. So then we can see that we will have 15 metal shelves at that point, but we will have zero plastic cups. So if we now obtain a new source of iron ore, and iron ore is only used in the production of metal shells, we know that nothing is going to change of our plastic cups. We cannot produce more plastic cups with iron ore, so we will have to start at this point. But if we only produce metal shells, we know that we, can, we will be able to produce more metal shells. So we know that our PPF is simply going to swivel out to the right. And let's put in another arbitrary point, and let's say this is now 25. If we use all of our resources, including our new source of iron ore, and we only produce metal shelves, we can produce 25 of these. But what if there was a discovery of a good or some resource which increases the production of both our plastic cups and metal, source, uh, metal shelves? What's then going to happen is the entire PPF will shift out in some manner. So let's say it will shift out to this effect. So let's say that was 20 and 25. This is what will occur if a new resource is found which increases production of both. Then, and remember, we need to indicate where our PPF is going. So we indicate it with an arrow that it swivels out. So I want to thank you for watching this short tutorial video of microeconomics where we dealt with the PPF. Make sure to check out our other micro and macroeconomic tutorials available at utomeonline.co.za.